found this, it's the Stig. No, it's not the Stig. Uh, we're here on the Car Fullen stand and I've got Rob here to tell me about the Stratasys and how long it took to build this. This is incredible. Yeah, so this is a helmet that we've printed on the F370, which is an FDM 3D printer. And this part would have took around about 50 hours to print. Absolutely perfect for prototyping, for form and fit check. So we've got a multitude of different materials we can use on here, as well as rubber materials and rigid materials. And of course, trends in the industry, 3D printing, what are you seeing? So a lot of people obviously come from prototyping background with 3D printing, but now more and more we're seeing jigs and fixtures and obviously end use parts where people don't want to commit to mold tools as well. So again, end use parts from this type of technology as well. New technology, pipe bending technology. In fact, I don't know a lot about this, but I do know a man who does. Tom from AMOB, tell me what your new technology, technology if I can say it is. This is our new EMOB 52 2 bend. It does left and right hand bending in cycle. So, so, really this, so we're at AMOB, but this is an EMOB. Fully electric, multi stack, left and right hand bending machine. Right. If you come and have a look at this simulator here, you'll see that it bends clockwise, head drops down, swivels, goes back up, and now we're bending counterclockwise. So that is braking technology or bending technology for those pipe benders out there in a nutshell. Correct. Okay. Now look at this machine very quickly. What sort of length will you go to? This is a four meter useful length machine. It's 52 mil diameter, can bend stainless, copper, marsdale, and everything in between. Can you go longer? You can go longer, yes, up to 12 meters. Well, and diameter, can, can you go wider? We can, yes, you can go all the way up to 225 mil diameter. There you go, impressive stuff from Tom, his EMOB at AMOB. We're here on the key and stand, and James here has got some new technology to show us. I must say, I've seen your machines out there, they're amazing. Yeah, this is the, the VHX 7000 Ultra Accuracy uh, Digital Microscope. It can measure features down to half a micron. Um, it also has the, uh, the revolving head here with four different lenses, meaning go from 20 well up to 6,000 times magnification, and that's a full 4K imaging resolution there. We're going to talk to Nathan Clark from InTouch Monitoring about what new products they've got at Southern Manufacturing. Hey Nathan, how's it going? So what do you guys do? Right, we do machine monitoring, so um, it's monitoring machines, the output of your machines in real time. Um, Brilliant. And what is this new product you got here? Right, this is our XTX016, so it essentially takes inputs from 16 machines, okay, and that outputs to our system um, in real time, so it's just a simple digital signal um, from the machine. So you can get it to 16 machines in, with one piece of hardware? Ex exactly that, yeah, and this, this sends the data up to our cloud in which we, we then take over, take, take the data and, and do great things with it. So Brilliant. Cost-effective monetary system, doing great things with your machines. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you very much. Thank you. And you're getting a theme, more new technology, mills, you're thinking mills and lays and big robot arms, but relatively new. Yeah. Since 2019, we've been supplying a range of Doosan collaborative robots. We've now got 10 in the range, uh, going from the small one here, you can see which is 900 mil 5 kg, up to the big boys at 25 kg and a 1.7 meter reach as well. Okay, so collaborative, so cobots, yeah. that's a, a big robot to be working with, 1.75 and 25 kg. Yes, it is, yeah. Now, I would always say, I, I'm always going on about this, that you have to be careful and risk assess every application that you've got. But yes, it's designed as a collaborative robot. Great way you've got to lift, you know, those heavier weights over those longer reaches for palletization, end of line packing, things like that. Real good niche in the market. Okay, and what is it specifically showing us right now? So it's showing us how it can work with vision. So it's a combination of vision, it's looking and identifying shapes on those cubes, placing them back in in the right position, and then going around and doing it again and again. So it's full automation, working with health and safety in mind as well? Absolutely, but as I will say again, we need to risk assess all our applications, but collaborative robots, collaborative applications, minimal guarding, maximum optimization of the production process. There you go, maximum opti optimization, if I could say it. Thank you very much. We're here at the Additive X stand, and I'm wondering, how do they make this? It's absolutely amazing. Welcome, Kevin. Hello. So, Hello. what is this piece of kit? How do we make this? So this was made um, on the Formlabs Fuse 1 3D printer. It's printed in a nylon 12 material um, through SLS technology. So laser beam and it sinters the powder. So we can do nylon 12 or nylon 11 um, in this particular unit. It's a three stage process. You print, you reclaim the powder, and then you bead blast just the excess dust off the powder as well, off the part as well, sorry. So um, very economically friendly because you can reclaim the powders, very cost efficient in that way as well. It can be used for high detailed parts um, and as well as complex geometries. Brilliant. With a lot of structural strength as well. A lot of structural strength, yeah. And you can make your own Wally. -E. Uh, oh, it's not Wally, -E, Johnny Five. 
Johnny Five from Short Circuit. We're talking new technology, but existing technology first, MSC, the existing stuff, but we'll come to new in a minute. Yep. What's all this? Uh, so our existing technology, which is our vent, a very modular system, so it's bolted on, you can make it bigger, make it smaller, whatever the customer requires, uh, a bit further on. So we've got our leading brands of cutting tools, which is pretty much what I'm involved with. And then beyond that, we do our PPE and all the other jazz that goes with it. So a huge, huge range of components, tooling, etc., in a machine shop, yep. but taking the machine shop to the next level. And if you haven't seen it, started on the 24th of January. That's correct, yeah. Yep. So uh, we've got our brand new technology centre, which is it's pretty amazing. Um, we've got it's not pretty amazing, it's very amazing. It's very amazing, sorry, yeah, I do apologise. Uh, I'll get shot for that one. But um, So we're bringing to life the, the customers' parts. We're able to prove out programmes from end-to-end -end process. It'll help us with fixturing as well. Um, and beyond that, we're looking at our digital story, which is our hardware being connected through our software. So we're now we've got systems such as the Vend, the um, ATMS, the um, machines themselves, the tool presetter, they're all able to talk to each other to cut out a little bit of human error. Okay, so you start with, the, come with the, you've got an existing component, new component, come to you guys, you've got software for that? Yes, uh, so we use Fusion 360 for our programming. Um, pretty good, pretty, well, very good, sorry. <laughs> um, and yeah, we can we can design, we can take the concept and we can come out with a finished part and give you a process. All digital, so you've got the part, you've, you've done the CAD on it, you've got the tooling from your vend. Yep, well, of course you get it from our vend. Well, who's other vend you're going to get it from? Absolutely, and then into the presetter? Yeah, into the presetter, so then from the vend, go into the presetter, presetter sets the tool, obviously, in the machine. I've missed that step, though, because you uh, tool shrinking. Oh, tool shrinking as well, but that doesn't really fall within the digital side, that's just something physical that we do. And then onto the final machining. Uh, yeah, onto the final machining, the good bit. Um, so yeah, we're, then we're doing the machining. We can record the data. We can video it as well, so the customer gets live live data for that. Chris, that's a very very brief overview of your new technology, well, existing technology, new technology at the MSC Technology Centre. If you want to improve machining, improve your processes, get in contact with the guys. Over to our next bit, of new technology. I've clubbed with these two gentlemen, uh, Ben and James. James, um, what brings you to the show today? Well, we're exhibiting, but I'm down at this end because I just love the size of all the big machines, really, yeah. Okay, and yourself, Ben? Yeah, yeah, well, we, we just like seeing all the all the different manufacturers that are around. I mean, there's there's so much variety here as well, it's great. And is it good to be back and not be watching everyone on Zoom's meeting? It's so good to be back, it's so good. There's, like, you get so much more in person being here, yeah, yeah, you really do. I'm a sucker for new technology. Mark, what have you got to show me? Vacuum, vacuum work holding. Not everybody may know about this. It's been around for a while, but we may not have got it to every individual that can use it. So here we have vacuum. It's holding it. You can't move it. It's brilliant for machining. You can change the mats if you need to. You can cover it up to 50% with the material and it will still allow you to machine it. You can cut into the mat it'll still go on working. If this is the sort of plate work you need, this is the sort of application we can help you with. Brilliant. You can tell who's doing all the hard work, but I've, I've found Angus Kirkwood from Flying Haggis Engineering. Angus, where are you from? Cambridge. <laughs> uh, right, well that's stumped me a little bit, but why are you here? Um, to see what the industry's doing, uh, see what I can learn, what's new. Uh, what, what is new? Well, too much for me to mention, really, but... Um... I don't know, cutting tools, automation, um, robotics, you know, all of these things that we've got to start applying ourselves. One thing that stands out to put you on the spot? Uh, this interview? Probably. No, there's an old bridge port around the corner that's doing accuracy that would make most modern machines blush. There you go, a blast from the past. Absolutely love it. Angus from Cambridge.